now i would request dr kalpesh as cover sir to please introduce our next presenter uh, next i would like to uh, introduce a uh, excellent orator and a renowned cardiologist from uh, not only in rajkot but entire saurashtra dr poptani sir uh, is serving as a uh, senior cardiologist in synergy multi specialty hospital here in rajkot and uh, today's his talk would be on management of indian diabetic dyslipidemia meeting goals and saving lives over to you pop tan sir a very good evening to all the attendees here a very good evening to kalpesh bhai thank you for such a nice introduction really humbled uh my presentation today is based on discussing this diabetic dyslipidemia you must be wondering why what an interventional cardiologist is doing as far as dyslipidemia or the or diabetes is concerned but yes this is something which is a very serious business it has lots of its cardiovascular outcomes which need to be managed early intensification what we call and that is the reason why diabetic dyslipidemia is something which along with a diabetologist along with the primary care physician if an interventional person also understands properly then patient outcome can improve so coming to the presentation this presentation is courtesy astra uh, thank you astra for this presentation uh, what are the risk factors for diabetes in india so the indian phenotypes definitely differs if you look at the risk factors yes they are the age male family history urbanization which is occurring in our society the abdominal obesity hypertension and the socio economic strata which is giving a diversified look as far as diabetes is concerned and most importantly obesity obesity is something in our indian subsets which is killing us so the indian phenotype has its own unique characteristics in the form of yes higher insulin resistance greater abdominal adip adiposity thereby leading to higher waist circumference a typical characteristic dyslipidemia where you have high triglycerides low hdl and high small dense ldl so all these are something which leads to increased susceptibility to type 2 diabetes mellitus and consequently your coronary artery diseases the indian phenotype challenges which we occur yes the greater abdominal opacity and visceral fat at any given bni higher waist circumference and waist to hip ratio low level of adipokines and high plasma leptins increased concentration of triglycerides and low rate of glucose disposal that is sedentary lifestyle which has been a major problem for indian phenotypes impaired insulin secretion and increased insulin resistance and genetic factors so all these factors the indian phenotypic factors they contribute to the development to the susceptibility of diabetes mellitus as far as indians are concerned so coming to the glycemic targets of diabetic patients and in india the glycemic control if by look at by region wise this is the world over which has been given the mean hba1c was 8.4 and in india it's 8.6 a slightly on a higher side there is therefore an appropriate need for treatment for indian diabetic subsets the indian phenotype primarily needs to control both the management your diabetes part as well as the dyslipidemia so early and appropriate treatment and early intensification is required for both the therapies whether it's diabetes or it's dyslipidemia so these are the initial slides for controlling for achieving the glycemic control in a faster rate so i will not go into the details of this but there are few important reasons for intensifying the treatment early there are possible reasons in indian subsets where the treatment is not so intensified early so that can be patient related factors that is the pill burden of multiple pills fear that something is majorly long that they need to take multiple pills cost of therapy and treatment related factors that is the clinical inertia wait and wait watch approach dropouts due to multiple pills so these are the reasons where because of which intensifying of treatment in diabetes is not that great in indian subsets though it is changing over a period of time and what are the consequences of delayed intervention patients with an hba1c more than 7 and those who have not received intensification of their treatment within one year and patients with hba1c who have received intensification within one year so this is the graph which gives us so 
those in whom the treatment intensification has not occurred at five and a half years, significantly they have an increased risk of myocardial infarction, stroke, heart failure, and composite cardiovascular endpoints in the form of 62%. So this is a humongous figure as far as the consequences of delayed intervention are concerned. And this is where managing your diabetic dyslipidemia has an important treatment aspect. So those with HbA1c more than seven and have not received intensified treatment, whether it's diabetes or whether it's diabetic dyslipidemia, the consequences are quite adverse. The ca cardiovascular events are more than 50%. So early intensification is needed to reduce the rate of complications as far as treatment is concerned. I'm not going to the details of the drugs. There have been certain details which are there, but coming to directly to the dyslipidemia portion. So Indian phenotypes need to control both as was I have said in this slide previously also. So this was the diabetes which we discussed the few points and the dyslipidemia now. So dyslipidemia status in diabetic patients in India is one, Prevalence of dyslipidemia, patient on statin, but those who have achieved LDL-C goal, and patient on statin and other lipid-lowering agents. So if you look at the chart on the left, the prevalence of dyslipidemia is to the tune of 79%. Patient on statin who achieve LDL-C goal is less than 50%. And patient on statin and other lipid lowering agents, but not have achieved LDLC goal is more than 50%. So this is where we need to treat our patients properly. The risk of cardiovascular diseases is higher for Indian patients. In comparison with the Europeans, the cardiovascular disease affects Indians almost a decade earlier. The 10% of heart attacks occur in Indians less than 40 years and 52% of the CVD deaths occur under 70 years. There was this inter-health study where dyslipidemia has been a, suggested to be the strongest contributor of acute MIs in Indian subsets. So what does it say? Now, if you reduce a 39 milligram per deciliter LDL by statin, it reduces the risk of 21% of major cardiovascular events. So at any given level of statin dose, it definitely reduces your risk factors. So what do the guidelines suggest? Identify LDLC as a primary target of therapy. Lower LDLC is better with proven pharmacotherapy and better lifestyle habits. Both emphasize that 50% or more lowering of LDLC and also identify specific values of LDL to trigger further clinical action. Each set of guidelines, whether it's ESC or ACC, has addressed the issue of primary prevention as the most important aspect. In India, what has to be the aim? The aim has to be reduce your LDL to 50%. So a diabetic patient with or without dyslipidemia may have moderate to high CV risk as far as these guidelines are concerned. And the early intensification is definitely needed for these patients. You identify your patients, whether they are high risk subsets, very high risk subsets, moderate risk patients or low risk patients and intensify your treatment accordingly. So the LDLC goes to be based on these CV risk. So those with lower CV risk, LDLC target less than 160, LDLC target less than 100 in patients with moderate CV risk, LDLC target less than 70 milligram per deciliter in high CV risk, and LDLC less than 55 in patients with very high risk. So this has to be the target as far as treating your dyslipidemia is concerned. So it has to be always lower the better. ACC guidelines recommend 50% of LDLC reduction for optimal atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk reduction as far as treatment is concerned. This is a very busy slide. I'm not going into the details of this. Yes, intern, initiate statin to reduce your LDLC by more than 50%. This has to be a class one indication. So this is where we have to understand. Identify your risk factors, categorize them into low risk, moderate risk, high risk, and very high risk, intensify your statin therapy accordingly so as to, and the primary aim has to be to reduce LDLC by 50%. So need to go for more than 50% of LDLC reduction? Yes, this is when, once your primary target is achieved, 
go down to the lesser the better rate the same message is conveyed in this slide also ldlc by reduction by more than or equal to 50 percent reduction re results with lower number needed to treat so this was your ldl target what about hypertriglyceridemia, which is also a major concern as far as indian subsets are concerned so the statins are recommended as first drug of choice for managing your hypertriglyceridemia where you have triglycerides more than 200. 2019 Guidelines suggest statin treatment is recommended as a first drug of choice for reducing CVD risk in high-risk individuals with hypertriglyceridemia. And that figure is 200. So intensification has of the statins has to be considered before combining it with other drugs. So treatment of dyslipidemias in diabetes mellitus has to begin with intensification of statin before the introduction of a combination therapy. And if still the goal is not achieved, statin combination with azetamide has to be confirmed. For type 1 diabetics, statins are recommended in patients who are at high or very high risk. The ADA 2020 guideline recommends recommendations for statin and combination treatment in adults with diabetes is age less than 40 years with atherosclerotic risk of more than 20 years, yes. Then recommended state intensity and combination therapy is yes. You have to intensify your treatment, give statins on a full dose and try to reduce your cholesterol levels as much as possible. Rosua statin is 20 to 40 milligram of the dose which we call as high intensity statin. Atrova statin dose of 40 to 80 milligram of statin which we call as high intensity statin. And the moderate intensity statin therapy is lowers your cholesterol by 30 to 50 percent. That is rosua statin of 5 to 10 milligram, atroa of 10 to 20 milligram. Similarly, the drugs which have been all the listed. Low dose statin therapy is generally not recommended in patients with diabetes, but is sometimes the only dose of statin that a patient can tolerate. It happens sometimes. For patients who do not tolerate the internet intensity of statin, the maximum tolerated statin dose should be used. What about the combination therapy? ADA 2 2020 guidelines says for other combination therapy, statin plus a fibrate combination has not shown to improve atherosclerotic cardiovascular diseases outcomes and is generally not recommended. Statin plus niacin combination therapy has not been shown to provide additional cardiovascular benefit above statin therapy alone may increase the risk of stroke with additional side effects and is generally not recommended. So your high intensity statin, if at all you need to add up with azetamide, statin plus fibrate and statin plus niacin has not been shown to have improvement as far as cardiovascular, atherosclerotic cardiovascular outcomes are concerned. So choosing your right statin, Rosua statin was found to be the more effective in reducing your LDLC goals getting the ratios appropriate and non-HDLC versus atovastatin in 16 weeks. And there have been a series of trials which have proven this. This is the Uranus trial which gave us this. There is something which has been a debate for the last almost two years now, whether it's an innovator or a research agent, which is more efficacious or it's a generic which is out there. Naturally, yes, the innovators always have an upper hand as far as side effects are concerned. They always come with lesser side effects. There are certain patient-centric specifications for drug, drug substances which may or may not be there with generics. And it is like comparing a Volvo bus with a rickshaw. So better stick to what is good for a patient. So let us not go into the details of this. Yes, there are certain impurities in generics which can be a source of non-compliance of patients. Patients may abruptly stop the drugs because of the side effects. This is something which you need to see in your patients. Sometimes statins are not tolerated if the generics are not tolerated, but if you give them this pure innovative brands, yes, they are able to tolerate. So just to finish off my slides, last two, three slides now, Early and individualized treatment approach is always recommended. That is most important part. Early and 
intensive control with combination of anti-diabetic agents and appropriate statin therapy. Metformin is the first line of anti-diabetic agents. Innovative dual hydrophilic polymer for met metformin is better. I'm not going into the details of this. There are fixed dose combination of the drugs which are there. Risk of CVD is higher in Indian subsets, which can be reduced by reducing your LDLCs. Guidelines recommend setting of LDLC goal patients for patients. Statin has to be the first line of therapy to reach the goals set for specific level of risk. Guidelines do suggest considering intensification of statin to the maximum tolerated dose before the combination therapy. And in that, azetamide is first, then comes the other combinations. Rosua statin by itself helps to reduce your LDLC by more than 50% and also the triglycerides by 21% in diabetic dyslipidemia patients, which is important for our patients. To have optimum efficacy, yes, we have to consider the research innovative statins. Thank you all for patient listening. Thank you, Dr. Vishal Poptani.